Hello everyone and welcome to day number 35 of our 66 days of data with NIME daily life challenge where we bring you from zero to hero in data science, data analytics using the open source and free tool NIME. So what are we going to cover today after yesterday's kind of fail? Well, today we are going to talk a little bit about a theoretical piece and that is how do you create a good dashboard? We already had some of this a few days back and you hear me talk about this also when we created some of the charts. So we said, okay, we don't need this, we don't need that because it just clutters the charts even more. But there is a fantastic article in the resources um, on the NIME blog about the 66 days of data. And that is something I definitely want to share with you. And that I also want to share my insights after creating the one or the other dashboard using NIME. And I want to um, do this together with you. So two things before. The first one, if you like this kind of video, if you like this kind of tutorial and the things we're doing here, make sure to subscribe and follow me um, because that not only motivates me and helps me to do more of these videos for you guys for free, but it also helps the algorithm to basically um, yeah, show these videos to more people so more people can become proficient. And it might benefit your career as well. So with that aside, I also want to invite you to follow me, not only because I say it, but also we have some great things in stock. So I started reading this fantastic book that I received, Codeless Time Series Analysis with Nime. And if you don't want to miss out on forecasts from easy to, I would say, pretty sophisticated using time series examples, also make sure to subscribe and follow because I re received that review, uh, this um, review copy, so I didn't pay anything for it. I'm going to read through it. I will note down my stuff and you will get my honest review and I will share honest examples and honest stuff we're doing based on the theories and on the learnings from that book that uh, embraces NIME um, in this channel. All right, with the advertisements aside, I basically um, wants to switch over to the computer and there we basically have a look at what today's task is and what that resource is I was talking about. So let's just switch to the screen. All right, here we are. So we are in day 35, the last day of the um, plots and charts univariate analysis section. So we created some charts yesterday. It didn't work out. But today we are going to talk about investigating interactivity in the composite view. And you already saw a lot of this. So let me just um, show you here. Uh, let me just open the um, the workflow from day 33. And if we just go here into this dashboard in nine that we have created already, um, you might see some interactivity. For example, if I choose a specific artist, that tile pops up here. It has the same color. This artist gets selected or marked if you want here as well as here and here again it has the same color and all these elements are active with one each other for example if i want to get rid of glenn gold i click this little button here he disappears from here and he might also i oh know he does not disappear from the table of course but um you see it changes these things so it's, these are not um how do you say these are not like hard code charts that do not change? No, they are interactive and they're working together. So let me just share also um, one of the resources here. And let me know in the comments if you want to see a little bit about the NIME web portal. I'm pretty sure we can make an extra session because it is also mentioned here. And NIME web portal usually runs on NIME server, which is the NIME premium product. But don't worry, NIME is, and as far as I have understood, always will be free and open source if you run it locally. So that's that's um, that's something that's guaranteed. So what I wanted to share with you is this article here, how to create an interactive dashboard in three steps with the NIME analytics platform. Because what I really like is that Emilio Silvestri, Emilio is, is, a, um, is an intern at NIME, 
describes pretty well how you can approach the process of creating a dashboard in a very well structured way. Because a lot of people just do it like it's described here, right? Create some beautiful charts, wrap them up in a component, deploy the interactive view as a web page. Um, yeah, nice, um, but maybe um, not the best approach. Um, or yeah, they, they describe it. If, but for me, this, this yeah, this this is the, the technical part. But what really is interesting here is is um, what they write. How you should approach it from a, from a tools perspective. So they are working with the Netflix movies and TV shows data set. And they also describe, for example, one pre-step is importing and pre-processing the data. Maybe if you remember in the data set that we have downloaded, we had that, um, that release date column. And some release dates were years, some release dates were months and years, and some release dates were complete dates. So you really have to, you really have to pre-process this kind of data to make sure that it's all the same and that you can work with it. It wouldn't make sense if you, for some artists and some tracks, you have the year and for others, maybe from the same artist, you have a complete release date. So normalizing, standardizing, all these kind of things. So in their um, three-step process, the very first one is to create a few beautiful charts and the few is probably the key here i have seen dashboards with like 50 60 charts sometimes even of the same type always showing different companies quite honestly that kills you and i know there are some excel cracks out there that sell this as a service or as a template and it might look good but the problem is you will lose control about these dashboards because you basically, how can you compare 50 different companies? Um, you might identify a few outliers, but at the end it does not. You, you first have to think about what is the message you want to convey, the story you want to tell, and we talked about that before, and then what is the best chart to convey that message. And less is more. It's always... Um, something I would probably um, favor. So if you ask me if you should do a chart less or one more, I would say, well, better to do um, one less. So you see, for example, here they have a sunburst uh, a chart, um, which can basically show uh, categories and subcategories and how they are distributed. Some things you might want to do, and I've seen this recently when we were talking to some people who were interviewed um, for, for a, a job, is um, maybe you share your findings. Maybe say in, in this regard, um, the majority of, um, of, of movies um, sits in the categories blah, A, B, and C, right? So that's that's maybe something you want to make. You want to make these kind of statements. You also can see like here, this is a pretty pretty simple statement. Maybe even as a as a um, as a as, a, as an improvement here, I'm not one hundred percent sure if I would add the axis label here on the y axis. TV show length, um, uh, seasons, and um, yeah, maybe you could, maybe you could, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Once again, here about the about the um, about the, the the legend that they have here. Um, for example, I would definitely leave out this duration, right? You, the movie length in minutes. Um, you, it is pretty clear that these are the minutes, these are the numbers of movies. Why do I need duration movies as, as, a, as a legend here in addition? So maybe there is some room for improvement. What I also would suggest, and that's something that you can see here very well, you, in NIME, use NIME workflow annotations to document your process. Tell potential other developers why you did the things you did. All right, second step. Once you have these few beautiful charts, wrap them up in a component. And that's super easy. You have seen me done this before. Basically, if you go into NIME, you just go like, you mark it, right click on one of the nodes and say, create component. I won't do it here, 
but that's basically how it goes. And then um, you can give the component a name. And uh, yeah, so this one, for example, is a meta node. This one is a component. And when you are within that component, you have seen that, seen me doing that before, you have this little body um, uh, available to you. And that's the uh, node usage and layout window. And this one allows you to structure your charts, right? To assign them, also maybe add some text and this kind of stuff. And then the third step, which to a certain extent is optional, and this refers to the NIME server, um, deploy it as a web app. It depends a little bit on, on what your use case is. And of course, if your, um, if your company, for example, wants to use the server and has a business case for that, um, but that's really the that's that's really then top notch because in return it means you as a domain expert. I come from procurement. You come maybe from a sales finance organization or sales ops team or whatever. Um, you as a sales ops expert, you can create apps without IT. So you create a dashboard app that is interactive, as you can see here, that your users can use in the web portal for themselves. Or you give them maybe added functionality. Maybe you just create the dashboard and they upload data from their organization um, as well, right? So that these are some of the, of the really interesting things that you can do. There are all kinds of additional charts that you could do. You could have, for example, a world map um, where you basically show some numbers like intensity, uh, like in an intensity or like a heat map on um, on on, on geograph based on geographical data. You can have like tech or word clouds um, where the most important terms are in the middle and big. So I have created basically a workflow when I was in procurement where one of our big suppliers we scraped their job board. And we basically text uh, mined their job ads and just look what were the most important projects and skills they were looking for. Very interesting discovery. And once again, at that point in time, and I'm still am, um, I'm not a data scientist nor a data analyst. I'm just a procurement person. And NIME is the tool that allows you to do it that way with no code, so to say. All right, so that was what I wanted to show you today. And this also add, uh, ends this section on univariate analysis. Tomorrow we start in day number 36. We start again, or we continue our journeys through plots and charts, but we are going to look at multivariate analysis. And multivariate means we have um, charts where we also show relations between certain factors. And we're going to cover that tomorrow when we start here. We're going to talk about the rule engine node, which is a super powerful node. So if you don't want to miss out on this one, please make sure to like and subscribe these videos. Um, and then we will see each other tomorrow for day number 36 of 66 days of data with none. See you tomorrow and bye-bye.